Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sheikh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Barakallah fikum. Okay, so let us get started here. We'll save this. We are in Surah Al Fatih today. Amen. We go from first ayah to, well, I think, 16, I believe it is, 16th ayah. No, you go to the 17th ayah, stop at, يعني, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ يُعَذِّبْهُ عَذَابًا عَلِيمًا that's when you're stopping at the end. The first step is going to be the first stop that you're going to do though, I want you to stop at I uh in uh stop right before me. Stop at Aziz and Hakima. And then go from Aziz and Hakim at Ajr al Avima. And then say, Kulak Mukhalakun to the end of to, to, to Sabatashi. Okay? Well, yeah. No, that all goes together. Okay? Abu Mahmoud. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Go ahead, Sheikh. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. ليغفر لك الله ما تقدم من ذنبك وما تأخر ويتم نعمته عليك ويهديك صراطا مستقيما وينصرك الله نصرا عزيزا هو الذي أنزل السكينة في قلوب المؤمنين ليزدادوا إيمانا مع إيمانهم وَلِلَّهِ جُنُودُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا لِيُدْخِلَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْمُؤْمِنَاتِ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارُ خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا خَالِدِينَ فِيهَا وَيُكَفِّرَ عَنْهُمْ وَتِهِمْ وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا ويعذب المنافقين والمنافقات والمشركين والمشركات الضالين بالله ظن السوء عليهم دائرة السوء وغضب الله عليهم ولعنهم وأعد لهم جهنم وساءت مصيرا وللله جنود السماوات والأرض وكان الله عزيزا حكيما الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وآله وصحبه ومن اتبعه إلى يوم الدين We are in the Tafsir of Jalalain سورة الفتح الحمد لله رب العالمين and this surah, it means victory. You know, I realize now I did not write in the book here, notes here, about this surah. 
So I won't do that now. <clears throat> this surah is connected to the surah that preceded it, Surah to Muhammad. If you notice that in Surah to Muhammad, we dealt with the Muslimin, the, the Mu'minin, the Kufar, the Munafiqin, the Murtad. We dealt with these groups. Likewise, in this surah, we're going to deal with the believers. We're going to deal with the Munafiqin and the Mushrikeen. Okay, groups are going to be dealt with. And of course, the Mushrikeen are the Kufar. Also in Surah to Muhammad, we're taught how to fight, that we have to fight, that we're not to be weak, that we're not to be looking to make a peace treaty when we are ready to fight and we have all the power on our side. No, then we go and get everything, okay? Victory or paradise. And this Surah, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, similar to that in Surah to Muhammad, Muhammad is mentioned, okay? Muhammad is mentioned in the, the previous story is saying that the Quran was sent down Nuzila ala Muhammad, right? Wahu al haq and that's the Quran, it is the truth. In this surah too, Muhammad is mentioned by name. And as might be said, only four times in the Quran is the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned directly by name. In this one, Muhammad al Rasulullah, the messenger. Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. So that's a that's a connecting um, point here. But not only we taught the fight in Surah to Muhammad, in this surah, we're told we're going to get the victory for fighting. And that the victory comes from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So that if we do what Allah taught us and told us to do in Surah Muhammad, then this Surah teaches us about the victory. And, and as if we've been going, going through the Quran from the very beginning, you see Allah is telling us stories of different prophets to expound upon the point of that particular Surah. And in this Surah 2, he tells us a story from the life of one of the prophets. And it happens to be from the life of the prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. What's the suitability here? Well, he was mentioned in the last surah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So it would make sense that his story now, or this, a story tied to that particular prophet Muhammad, would be mentioned as an example to show about the victory since he was used as an example of why we should fight and for what we should fight for. So that's another uh, reason why that is uh, mentioned here, walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And after that, we go to the ayat that the brother mentioned, Yani Abu uh, Mahmoud just recited for us. And he began with the beginning of the Qur'an. I'm sorry, in the beginning of Surah Al-Fatih. And he says, "A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytanir rajim." Bismillahi r-Rahmani r-Rahim. Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. Number one, this is a Medinan surah, so we know there's going to be action here. There's going to be things we gotta physically do, because the Medinan surahs, I'm sorry, the the Meccan surahs talk about tarsiq al-Aqida, making our feet firm in Aqida. Arkan al-Iman, teaching us what the fundamentals of Iman are, right? And clarifying usul al deen Well, the Madani Surahs shows the application of those things, the application of that deen, that aqidah, those are principles of, 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 of Iman and those usul al deen put into physical application. So here, after fighting, Allah says, Inna fatahna laka fatham mubina. I have made for you a victory, a fatah, opening, okay? Laka for you, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, fatham mubina, a clear victory. Liyaghfira laka Allah, and it says here, maghfira is mentioned here, in order for Allah to forgive you. Liyaghfira Allah, for your striving and your struggles and for some of your mistakes, zalat, you know? Now here... The last surah we ends, Allah tells us, right? So then no, you taught to seek for forgiveness. Here, this surah here is talking about forgiveness in another light. We know from the hadith that the Prophet وسلم, his sins were forgiven from this ayah, the ones that preceded him and the ones that came after all his past sins and any sins he would do in the future. And he said, What does the Prophet sin? Prophets make mistakes, but not major sins. This Okay, from amongst those things, and we don't want to go to extremes and say, oh, well, you know, the prophet doesn't sin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it clear, the yaghfira laka, to forgive you, for Allah to forgive you. Okay, ma taqaddaba min dhanbik wa ma 
what you previously did of your sins and what you might do uh, in the future and what might and whatever happened be before. Okay? And there are a few times where they're mentioned in the Quran. One of them, the most famous one people know, Abbasawatawalla, he frowned and turned away. This was a mistake. Is it a major mistake? Is it a major sin? No. But Allah is calling him to account for that. And he's teaching us that only Allah is perfect. But the Prophet Sallallahu he made the whole message that Allah gave him reach. He was perfect in that. Okay? Alhamdulillah. And to complete his ni'mah that Allah is giving him, the blessings that Allah has given to him. So Allah is telling him something else he's giving. وَيَهْدِيَكَ بِهِ With this ni'mah, سِرَاطًا مُسْتَقِيمًا And to guide you to straight and narrow, not narrow, but the straight way that it will straighten you out. وَيَنْسُرَكَ اللَّهُ نَصْرًا عَزِيزًا And to give you victory and help you. And we know Sirat al Mustaqim is, is Islam, of Islam. And this is now what our Shaykh Muhammad al Amin al Ethiopi, rahimahullah, what he taught us about this is this is, I call it the surahs of fools. Four for everyone. You can write that down. Four for everyone. So Allah is giving his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, four things here. The first thing that he's been, well, one of the things he's given him. He's giving them, you know, right? He's forgiven them all his sins, his previous. The next thing he's given them is gathering together al mulk just like Musa. He's giving them dominion. He's giving them authority, physical might and authority. So not only is he just a prophet, but he is a prophet and he is the leader. Because now he's going to open up and have not just Medina, Mecca, and the whole Arabian Peninsula. So he's going to be the undisputed leader. That's two. The next thing that he's giving him is He's guiding him to the straight path. And the fourth thing that he's giving him He's saying And giving him this Nasr. So he's giving him this dignity, this, 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 this position in the world where he can now give or not give, do what he likes, and no one can stop him. So this is a four for all, four for all. So when the Sahaba, radiallahu anhum, when they heard about this, they, they were happy for the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And they said to him, they, let me put this here, four for all, four for all. So put the four things that I said on here, uh, uh, Omar, write this down. For the Prophet, Forgiveness of his sins. Gathering together, mulk wa nubuwa. Two. Three. Hidayah ila sirat al mustaqim. I'm sorry, guidance to sirat al mustaqim. And four. Izza wal mana'ah. Izza dignity and the ability to he can refuse anybody he wants. Okay? Authority. Izza dignity and authority. Now after that, write Muslimun. After that, put the Muslimun. Because then Allah's met the, the Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, what did Allah give us? What does Allah give us here? And Allah goes on and says, Huwa ladi anzala sakinata fi qulubil mu'minim. Count it. He said, he is the one that has sent down sakina at tu'manina. Right? He gave them, you know, Comfortability, yatama inna qalbi, comfort, right? Sakina, tranquility. As I keep telling you, the heart is mentioned so much in the Quran as the source for the human, for all of his guidance and everything. Heart is what's being spoken to, not the intellect or the ego in the head, but the intellect and the purity of the heart. So he sent down Sakina to the hearts. لِيَزْدَادُوا إِمَانًا مَعَ إِمَانِهِمْ To increase them on the iman, on top of the iman. Two things he's, they've given them now. He has sakina, right? And sakina also gives you waqaf. Sakina, because when you're quiet, people give you reverence and respect. Okay? There's an old Arab uh, thing that says, 
We thought you were something till you opened your mouth. Okay? And then once you open your mouth, you can who owe you so dipple. And when you open your mouth, then whatever you say, it it belies what we think about you by your appearance, or it confirms what we think about you by your appearance. Okay. So here he says this sakina, this tranquility, it gave them also a sense of waqar, dignity and respect and reverence from others. Also increased their iman. So they have this tutma inna, they have this yadatul iman, and then Allah goes on to say, Walillahi junudu samawati walar, meaning he didn't have to use you. If Allah wanted to gain victory for his deen with someone else, he could have done that. I don't need you, he has angels, he has what he could create whatever he wants. Or say, Kun wa fayakun, wa kan Allahu aliman hakima, and Allah has knowledge about his creation, knows everything. That we know and don't know and don't even think to know. Hakima fi sun'ihi. And how he goes about things. He is totally wise. Okay? How he goes about things. Sorry. In order for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He ordered us to do the jihad. As opposed to someone else. In order for to enter the believers. Into the garden, Jannah, into the gardens, the gardens that are flowing beneath them, these rivers that we spoke about before, right? He told her the rivers made of water, right? The asinin, right? Made of milk. Right? Then Asal and Musaffa, right? Allah told us about these rivers. So people say, well, why is he always mentioning these rivers? Because he told you about those rivers. So now you can go and drink for them. They're not just to flow. They're for you to drink for them and enjoy them. And listen, think about the smells of them, those rivers. They smell good. And it sets for a beautiful scenery for you to be living amongst. And a lot of times people just say, why is he always say that jiddy when the hell and Because you don't know those rivers. You don't remember what those rivers are. But now we do remember, right? Alhamdulillah. Khalidina fiha. Living in there forever. What also does he give them? Why you kafir anhum sayyatihim. And he, you kafir takfir dhunubihim. He, he wipes away, he ignores all their evil deeds. Allahumma kafir sayyatina. Anna sayyatina. Ameen. Oh Allah, make kafir from us our sayyat. Ignore our evil deeds. وَكَانَ ذَلِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ فَوْزًا فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا And that is, was, and always will be. When you see Kana from Allah, that is, was, and always will be. Okay? ذَلِكَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا That is the greatest and magnificent victory that we can get. For, for all. Okay? So we need to think about this. Comfort to their hearts. Increase in Iman. No, lady, there's, you're missing here. Okay? Increase the Iman of, of, the, of the believers. Dukhulu fil Jannah. Dukhulu Jannah. Enter Jannah. Enter Jannah. That would be uh, number three. Right? And oh, let me go this way. Oh, okay. Now, number one is prophecy. You know? Enter into Jannah and to uh, takfir, takfir of their sins. Okay, this is number four. That's the, I wanted it all in one thing, guys. I wanted to say for the Muslimin, let's do this. For the Muslimin, they have four things. Number one, they have sakina in their hearts. Okay, number two. Oh, I just said the same thing, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do it. No, number two, they're, they're going to get the, the uh, increase in man. Increase in man. Okay. Number three, enter gender. Number four, takfir. That's it. Six. Let me go here. Number one, uh, sakina. 
Okay, you got it? Sakina in their hearts, increase in Iman. They enter Jannah to take fear of their sins. For, for all. Okay? Everybody follow me? You understand? For, for the prophet. Okay? Forgiveness for his sins. Right? Fatfun. Okay, so he is Mulk and Nubuwa. Okay? Then he has yani, Al Hidayah to Surat al Mustaqeen. And then on top of that, he has Izzah. Because Allah helped him even further. Takfir of sins. Yes, takfir is to make kufr of his sins. What is a kufr? A kafir is to reject and not recognize. Pretend like you don't see. So Allah is ignoring fear, fear of sins is to ignore those sins. Like they don't, like they don't, don't make statements, Wadi. Don't make statements. It's bad or bad for the student to do that. Ask a question. Don't make statements. Takfir of sins is to ignore those sins. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. So the next one, we said four for all. Talking about what do the kufar get? The kufar come next. Because Allah is fair. He gave the, gave the prophet. He gave the believers. It's only fair that he give the kufar something too, right? And Allah is always fair. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And to, now the first thing they get is adab. You adib to punish. So the hypocrites, the munafiqeen and the mushrikeen, they get you adibu. Allah gives them a punishment. Okay, and he names them. The, 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 the munafiq amongst the men, the munafiq amongst the women, the mushrik men, the mushrik women. women. Who are these people? These people who are thinking about Allah, some wrong thoughts. They got some mixed up ideas, some evil thoughts about Allah. Okay, they think that Allah is three of, 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 of one or they, they say that all these lies about Allah or the Munafiq who they want bad to happen to the Muslims. They want bad to happen to the Prophet وسلم, and they want Islam to fail. All these evil thoughts these people have. So Allah says, Alayhim da'iratu saw. Alayhim da'iratu saw. They're going to have whatever they curse the Prophet and the believers about, that curse comes back on them. And this is how Allah deals with them. He gives them back what they, they initiated. Oh, that's what you want? Back to you. Alayhim da'iratu saw. And this is the same thing Allah does when we go to Surah Al-Lahab and we see Abu Lahab, he curses the Prophet, right? Tabbat lah. Sa'id al yawm And Allah says, Tabbat yada Abi Lahab and Watab. He gave him curse back. And people don't get it because they don't understand the whole Qur'an. They don't put the, the Qur'an in context. The curse Allah gives them is the curse that they gave. Okay? Humility and punishment. And Allah is anger is upon them. And he curses them. And the curse of Allah is to be far away from Allah. And la'anullah, Sheikh um, Abu Mujahid, read Abdullah, Hafidhu Allah wa a'ana hu wa a'ana la. He told us back 20 years ago, more than 20 years, in the 90s, I keep, my wife says I've been saying 20 years for 20 years. <laughs> he told us back when we were younger, he said, la'anullah means, the la'natu of Allah means, may Allah have no mercy on you whatsoever. May Allah have no mercy on you whatsoever. That is a frightening thought. And that's why we say, Allah to be beside Allah. And it's a la nothing, not one piece of mercy on you. jahannam. And he prepared for them Jahannam. Wasa'at Masira. And he has made them, prepared for them Jahannam. And what an evil place to return to. 
وللله جنود السماوات والأرض and Allah has the, the soldiers of the heavens and the earth وكان الله عزيزا حكيما and Allah is, was and always will be عزيزا mighty and powerful and hold all the authority hold all, own everything and be in charge of everything and have the ability to, uh, to, to enforce his will that's Aziz and more than that Hakim and he knows best and has the best wisdom on how to go about doing those things he doesn't have to use all his might he uses his wisdom to do whatever he wants forces his will when, in the, when and how he wants and Allah knows best what Aziz and Hakim means. We turn the actual meaning back to Allah. But this is what we understand with the language. And so there are four things that these people have gotten as well. So we write that mushrik, that al munafiq, munafiq, and mushrik. They get four things too. One, they get the adab. Adab. Adab and Ali now Adab. Number two, they get the Hadab of Allah. Hadab Allah. Hadab of Allah. Number three, they get the La'natullah. La'natullah. And, and, and that means we can curse him too. I know. We can curse him and they get the curse of Allah. And they get, they get to go to Jahannam. Okay. okay, so four for all. And this is a beautiful way how, the, how Allah at the begins the surah. This is just the beginning of the surah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. ya akhi. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem wa alihi wa sahbihi wa man ittaba'ahu ila yawm al-deen We are in Surah Al-Fatih, we are in Ayah Thamaniya, Ayah Ayah, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He takes the story in a different angle now and says Inna arsalnaka shahidan wa mubashiran wa nadira Again, beginning with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, the fact of the matter is, I have sent you shahidan as a witness. Meaning, you know, you, you know you're, you're a witness to what these people will do. Okay? That's what your job is here. Shahidan wa mubashiran and to give glad tidings. Okay? You're giving them glad tidings. Those people are inspiring the believers in the dunya about the Jannah. Does that make sense? And you're warning them through fear, telling them, scaring them, giving them horror stories about the people who do bad things, that the fire is going to be matwabun, inshallah. Okay? That must, this is what Allah is telling us. Why is he sent you for this reason? Sorry, why did he send you? Lay here in order to. Liyukminu billahi wa rasuli. In order for them. Liyukminu. In order for them, the people. Or to minu for you all too. Okay? Liyukminu billahi wa rasuli. In order for them, the people that you've been sent to, that's all of mankind, to believe in Allah and his messenger. Is that it? No. Wa yu'azziruhu. Hey, yansuruhu. 
So you, you, as we, we call it izar, right? What does the izar do? When you tighten your izar, it covers your outer and it helps you stand up straight. It's tighten your belt, help you stand up straight. Hey, to give victory to Islam. Okay? This is what it's supposed this is what we're supposed to be here for. What you what and to have honor and respect for Allah and His Messenger, right? This is what we're told to do. Well, you and to glorify Allah only. From the beginning of a day to the end of the day. It's like from A to B. Bukratan is the bakr, the virgin part of the morning. That's why it's called bukra, you know, the bikr. The virgin part of the moon, where I'll see you now, the end of the day, but it's the asr because the night comes before the day. Okay? The night comes before the day, so it's the asr of the day. Okay? The roots of the day. The day started here and you couldn't see it. Just like the roots of a tree, you can't see it, but it starts before the, the tree pops out. The night comes first, and it's asila, and then the day comes out of it. This is bukratan wa asila. So, not just the beginning at the beginning of the day and the end of the day. What is indicative of that from morning to evening? Okay. Inna ladina yubayyunaka inna ma yubayyun Allah. Now it says here, the fact of the matter, those who give you the bayah and the bayah here in the tafsir of what happened is bayah to ridwan during the Treaty of Hudaybiyah. There's a well called Hudaybiyah. It's a small village between Mecca and Medina. And so the people stopped. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to make Umrah. It's a long story. This tafsir is not designed for me to tell you all those stories. Okay? Because we're just trying to get a, a beginner understanding of the tafsir. If I tell you the story, it will take the rest of the time and then more. And not only that, then this would be tafsir Ibn Kathir, for example. You know? But here, we're just going to mention there was, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam went to make Umrah, they stop at Hudaybiyah. The town is named after the well, Hudaybiyah. And the Kufar surrounded them and said, look, we're not going to let you guys go make Umrah this year. And so they sent Uthman to go and, you know, as an ambassador, talk about what we're going to do here. And they got word back that Uthman was killed. That Uthman wasn't killed. Why they send Uthman? Because most of those people who were refusing to come to Islam were Uthman's direct relatives. Okay. They're, they're his, those are his Kabila. That's his people. So they're not going to bother him. And in fact, they honored him. Go ahead, man. You want to make Umrah? Go ahead. No. He said, no, I'm not going to do it if the Prophet can't do it. And so then the Prophet said, hey, if they, they can kill Uthman, we're going to fight to the death. Who wants to give me the pledge that we're ready to fight to the death? And 1,400 people, 1,400 of the Sahaba gave their hands forward under the tree. It's in another surah, surah to, uh, 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 Tawbah. We're going to get to that particular thing. And uh, Hazab. So they put their hands together. And uh, Yadullah fawqa aidihim. The hand of Allah. Allah says his hand was over their hand. Okay? So Allah is taking, accepting their bay'ah. Al bay'ah is from, you make a, a, an exchange. You trade. But here, this is meaning a contract to fight to the death. And what are we going to get if we fight to the death, Ya Rasulullah? You get Jannah. And they said, I want that. So they're ready to give their life, but it didn't come to that. But all those people who made that, that, that pledge, it was up there, like I said earlier, that when a person goes into battle, even if he doesn't get killed, even if the helicopter turns around, he was ready to give his life. He had already forsaken and said, I'm ready to die. Ready to fight, ready to kill, ready to die, and somebody will. That's what we used to say before we go into fight. Okay, you know, so this mentality is already there. So they already had that. They were ready to give it up. That it didn't happen doesn't mean that they weren't prepared to do it. So Allah promises them that I'm going to give you another victory. Okay, Khaybar, that's going to come up, the battle of Khaybar. And only you guys are going to go. And only you guys are going to get the, 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 the benefits of that, that, that battle right there. Okay. But this is not restricted. This story, sorry, this ayat, these ayat are not restricted to that story. In the ladina yubayyirunaka, those who make to the Messenger of Allah to follow him, ashadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. That's our statement of acknowledgement, our pledge of allegiance, because that's what bayah is. We're pledging our allegiance. We're ready to die to be Muslim. 
Okay? Yubayi'unaka innama yubayi'un Allah. They're really making a pledge to Allah. The acknowledgement to Allah. The allegiance to Allah. Why? Because you're doing it bidimni rasulihi. From the, the angle of he sent his messenger for you to make that pledge to. On his behalf. And the hand of Allah is over that pledge. So whoever nakatha is to undo, like let's say yarn. You have a yarn and you, you, you knit the thing together. Now, you undo that yarn. Let's say you made a, a something with it. Do you have anything made of yarn? I'll have to be here quickly. You have some yarn? Whenever you undo it, that's called yankuthu. You're undoing the, 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 the outfit or whatever the, the thing that you're making. you only undoing your own self. You're only decreasing and taking away from your own self. Okay? The harm is only going to come to you. The decrease is only going to come to you. This is something like, like this. This is what uh, Miss, Miss Jamila made, this one. But it's made out of yarn. Okay? If I was to find the piece and start doing it, I'm only undoing it. It's going to hurt my hat. It's going to hurt Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Wa man awfa bima ahad alayhi lahu fa sayu'tihi ajran azima. Allah says, but whoever awfa awfa. We learn from the story from the very beginning of the Quran. That's why it's very good to go from the beginning to the end because you learn terms in their proper context. Wafa. Ibrahim fa. Ibrahim was the one who fulfilled So he wafa and awfa means to fulfill every dot, every line of the contract. Bima ahada, what the agreement they made with Allah. What they, an ahd is a pledge, what they pledged to do. Okay? What they said, I'm sworn to do this. Alayhi laha. Fasayu'ti. And some alayhu laha. Fasayu'ti. Then Allah will give him. Ajran Adima. Okay? He will give him a great reward. Okay? A magnificent reward. And not mentioning the reward here is some of the goodness. You don't know what it is. And that makes you like, hey, I want to get that. Tafadl, Akmil, Ya Akhi. Naam, I got you. Naam? Fadl, Fadl, Fadl. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيقول لك المخلفون من الأعراب شغلتنا أموالنا وأهلنا فاستغفر لنا يقولون بألسنتهم ما ليس في قلوبهم قل فمن يملك لكم من الله شيئا إن أراد بكم ضرا أو أراد بكم نفعا بل كان الله بما تعملون خبيرا بل ظننتم أن لن ينقلب الرسول والمؤمنون إلى أهليهم أبدا وزين ذلك في قلوبكم وزين ذلك في قلوبكم وظننتم ظن السوء وكنتم قوما بورا وَمَنْ لَمْ يُؤْمِنْ بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ فَإِنَّا أَعْتَدَنَا لِلْكَافِرِينَ سَعِيرًا وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ يَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا سيقول المخلفون إذا انطلقتم إلى مظالم لتأخذوها ذرونا نتبعكم يريدون أن يبدلوا كلام الله قل لن قل لن تتبعونا كذلك قال الله من قبل فسيقولون بل تحسدوننا بل كانوا لا يفقهون إلا قليلا قل للمخلفين من الأعراب ستدعون إلى قوم أولي بأس شديد تقاتلونه أو يسلمون فإن تطيعوا يؤتكم الله أجرا حسنا وإن تتولوا كما توليتم من قبل يعذبكم عذابا أليما ليس على الأعمى حرج 
ولا على الأعرض حرج ولا على المريض حرج ومن يضع الله ورسوله يدخله جنات تجري من تحتها الأنهار ومن يتولى يعذبه عذابا أليما الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الكريم وآله وصحبه ومن اتبعه إلى يوم الدين. We are مازلنا in تفسير we're still in تفسير جلالين. It's a beginner's تفسير where we should start to get to know the Quran. We're in سورة الفتح آية 11 شاء الله تعالى. Where Allah سبحانه وتعالى he says. Okay, we're taking the story another angle now. Now, after we just mentioned here what happens for the believers, right? First, again, we started with the Prophet Muhammad in the last group of ayah. Then we went to the believers, right? And now we're going to the munafiqun again. Same thing from the beginning. First it was the Prophet, then the believers, then the munafiqin. The second set, Prophet, the believers, and now we're dealing with the munafiqin again. These are the, the subtleties of the Qur'an that we say make it un, in, in, the inimitability of the Qur'an, unable to be reconstructed, the miraculous nature of it, the perfection of it, all these subtleties that cannot Allah says, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سيقول لك المخلفون من العرب من I told you before Salfa means in the next world and Sa means this dunya you see I said this كتاب متشابه it is a book that supports itself one piece is constantly showing you what the other piece in consistency in there if it was for other than Allah, you would not. You would find a whole bunch of inconsistencies. But because it's Allah from Allah, you find nothing but the, the, the supporting measures of it. Mathanna. You will hear the mukhallafuna. These are the people who are munafiqun. The people who did the khallafahum Rasulullah. The khallafahum Allah. They did not go out with the Prophet Sallallahu to the battle of Hudaybiyah. They did not go because they were scared. They said, you know, if the Prophet goes out there, those Quraysh, they ain't going to let them go into Mecca. They're not going to allow them to get away. Gonna, we just went to war with these guys. We just killed these guys at Bedr. You know, we you don't think that we're going to be able to go over here? No. We just had we, we had those wars with these guys fighting them in the hood. They're not gonna let us go. In fact, they're gonna kill us. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna go. So they came and made excuses. And they said, Shagalatna Amwaluna wa ahluna fastagfir lana in the Pira'a of Hamza. Shagalatna amwaluna, our wealth busied us. We were busy taking care of business. Wa ahluna fastagfir lana, and we was busy taking care of our family. Like I said, and I always say this, what Shalkani said in his tafsir. One second, please, my children have a problem. Sit between these two girls. You guys need to stop fighting. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم شغلتنا أموالنا وأهلنا فاستغفر لنا. He says, our wealth, our business, all my affairs, and my family kept me busy. Now, Shalkani put down a, a principle, Rahimahullah, and he's a famous mufassir from Yemen. He said that the tafsir of the Qur'an is not just in the reason why it was revealed, but in the words themselves, they go on for all time. That's from the miracle. So this goes to us too. What are we going to say when we mukhallafu? 
when we go against and we oppose, Ya Hamakullah, when we oppose the act of what Allah has told us to do and what His Messenger has commanded us to do, we oppose that. We say, we're busy. I'm too busy taking care of business in my family. I got things I got to do. I ain't got no time for that. I can't do that. Shagalatna amwaluna wa ahluna fastaghfirlana. Istaghfirlana, ya akhi. I'm busy, I'm busy. And then we say the exact same thing. This is us. Stop thinking it's somebody else. Don't get wrapped up just in the reason why it was revealed. That's indicative of how to apply it, but you're supposed to apply it. Fifth is understanding why it was said, what you're supposed to do under those particular circumstances. Now picking them up and putting them in another um, experiment saying, now this is me. Are those my circumstances? Do they fit? So what was the objective here? Do I find myself following that same objective? And we put it together so we have to look at ourselves because we say this exact same statement was stuck for the one. Right? What's the bill letter? Yaqulun bi alsinatihim. They sang with their tongues, seeking istighfar. Okay? From Allah. Ma laysa fi qulubihim. Now Allah is talking about these munafiqeen. Hey, they don't really mean that. They don't really mean that. They're just saying that to get away with it. Then they're lying about their excuses. Qul say to them. فَمَنْ يَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ مِرَادَ بِكُمْ ضَرَّا فَمَنْ يَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ شَيْءٍ إِنْ أَرَادَ بِكُمْ إِنْ أَرَادَ بِكُمْ ضَرَّا So this is... Hamza, he says, فَمَنْ يَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ So who? Nobody can protect you from Allah. يَمْلِكُ لَكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ You know, protect you or defend you or have any say in, in, in over what happens to you in one bit in if and when أَرَادَ بِكُمْ If Allah wanted some, some heart to you ضَرًا أَوْ أَرَادَ بِكُمْ نَفْعًا or if Allah wanted a darra, darra is from the word durrun. Durrun originally means the absence of water, meaning the rain didn't come. Dur. So naqasa, I like that the word dur means the decrease in something. But initially in the Arab language, dur is the absence of rain. So that harms you, right? And then you see it all the time. If in the lead dur, all the time you see in the corner. There, anytime there's a decrease, there's an absence of something. It's called dur. Okay, the masat ni dur. You know, here darra. Okay, some harm has come to me. Awarad bikum nafa. Allah wants to benefit you. No one can say anything about it. Bal kan Allah bima ta'maluna khabira. Meaning, Allah is rather Allah is was and always will be well aware of what you're doing. He knows what you're doing. Khabiran. He knows and is well aware of what you're really talking about, what you're really doing. But rather, Allah makes it clear to them. Rather, rather than antumu alayn yanqaliba al-rasul wal-mu'minuna ila ahlihim. Rather, you thought than antum that the, that the messenger of Allah and the believers would never ever return to their families. Abada ila ahlihim. Abada. They, they thought you'd never return. Wazuyina dalika fi kulubikum. And you felt good about that. Zuyina dalika fi kulubikum. Again, the heart, right? Remember, the heart is being spoken to, focused on. Zugina, that was beautiful for you. You thought that would have been great in your hearts. So what are we supposed to say? And that was made beautiful in your hearts. 
And you thought some evil thoughts. You had some evil thoughts about that, that we would never come back. And more than that, what you're going to do if we didn't come back. And you are some, some despicable people that's already dead. Antum bura, y'all destroyed. It's, that's what you mean. Yeah, you antum kauma bura, you're already dead. You're already destroyed by your thoughts. You was already done with. Woman lam you mean be lahi wa rasuli hi fa inna atadana li kefirina sa'ira. Woman lam, and whoever does not believe. In Allah and His Messenger, whoever, no matter who He is, the fact of the matter is, I have I have prepared for those disbelievers a flaming fire, naran shadidan, a roasting. Sa'ir is focusing on the the flames of the fire. Allah. وَلِلَّهِ مُلْكُ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ And Allah has the possession and the ownership of everything in the heavens and earth. It's all for Allah. يَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُعَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ غَفُورًا رَحِيمًا And Allah is, was and always will be. Ghafooran, always accepting the tawbah. Your tawbah, ghafooran, is that your, ta your, your sins cannot be so big that Allah can't forgive them. You think that what you are so big that Allah can't forgive them? No, he is ghafooran. He is able to forgive any sin. While you're alive, he's promised you to forgive any sin. Even if you make shirk, Allah will forgive you of your shirk if you ask for forgiveness in this life. But if you die on that shirk, then Allah says, no, la man yashir, If they die on that, ma duna li man yashir. Okay? But he forgives everything else to whomsoever he wants to. That's after they're dead. But in this life, Allah forgives everything if you ask for that tawbah. Rahima, he's merciful to, specifically merciful to the believers. So Allah owns everything. He forgives whoever he wants and he'll punish whoever he wants. And he is, was, and always will be forgiving and extremely merciful to the believers. Then Allah goes on and says, سَيَقُولُ الْمُخَلَّفُونَ إِذَا انْتَلَقْتُمُوا إِلَى مَغَانِمَ لِتَأْخُذُوا هَذَرُونَ نَتَّبِعْكُمْ Now they're going to come to another point. The Mukhalafun are going to come back again. First they came and they wanted to get away. Hey, we, we can't go. شَغَلَتْنَا وَعَلُنَا وَأَحْدُونَا فَاسْتَغْفِرْ لَنَا we was busy with our families and our, and our business and our wealth. We couldn't get away. Make forgiveness for us. Now they want to come before you go out. Because that time they came at the end. Now you're going to Khaybar? Oh no. They're going to come and say, yo, when you're getting ready, when you're about to leave out, to go in talaqa is talaq to go out, right? Do you know this? You, when you're going to go out to go some to get some maghalam, some al-ghalam, is the, the war booty. Meaning, it looks like you're going to win when you go to Khaybar. Lina'khuduha, they want to get some of that. Hey, let us go. Utrukuna nadhab ma'akum. He said, let us go with you. Daruna. Remember, we said for a couple of surah. Fadaruhum. Then leave them. They're saying, Daruna. Leave us. Nattabi'kum. So we can follow you. Don't tell us we can't go. Yuriduna bidhalik al qawm. They want They want with that statement. They want to change, by their statement, they want to change the speech of Allah. Why? Because I told you guys earlier that when they were at Hudaybiyah, those who made the bay'atul ridwan, the pleased ridwan, Allah's messenger, وسلم, by the permission of Allah, promised them that they would go to the next victory and they would get it and only they would get it. You guys remember that? So this is the statement of Allah. Once he says that, it's done. The word don't change with Allah. So as we'll see in Surah Al-Qaf, this word doesn't change. He says it, it's done. So now they're saying, after Allah told you that only the people who was at Bayat al-Ridwan are going to go. Now you're telling us, let us go too? 
No, that's this is teaching us the adab. Once you get an order from your Lord, you don't let nobody break that order. You don't let nobody break that order. That order. And the speech of Allah does never change. They want to change you. Badilu kalam Allah. They want to change the word of Allah. What are you supposed to do? Qul, say to them, You'll never follow us. You'll never follow I'm sorry. Tattabi'una astaghfirullah. Lan tattabi'una. I was thinking in the singular. But you all will never follow us. Kadalikum qala Allahu min qabl. Just as regarding you all, kadalikum. And this is balagha. He says kadalikum. And for all y'all, it's, it's, it's this kadalikum here is less than kadalik. So it's kadalikum qala Allah. Like y'all, he's petrifying them. With just that word, كَذَلِكُمْ قَالُ اللَّهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ Mean a group of you. Okay? كَذَلِكُمْ قَالُ اللَّهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ Allah already spoke about y'all. فَسَيَقُولُونَ But they're going to respond. Like I said, sir. They're going to respond and say, بَلْ تَحْسُدُونَنَا Rather, you're just jealous of us. You're just jealous. You don't want to share the, the bounty that's going to come to you guys. You want to keep it all for yourself. Y'all greedy. بَلْ كَانُوا لَا يَفْتَعُونَ إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Rather, they can, they, they are, were, and will always be لَا يَفْقَهُونَ They can't understand, they ain't got no fit. إِلَّا قَلِيلًا Except a little bit. Only got a little bit. Meaning, only a foot them got some fit. The rest of them ain't got no understanding. No fit, no profound understanding. Talk, and we find this with the general population still. Majority of people ain't got no fiqh. Allah tells us to say, and when Allah tells us to say, this should be our stance. These should be the things that we are memorizing so we can say them. <laughs> say to those people who are breaking with the, the, the orders of Allah, and particularly those people we just mentioned. سَتُدَعَوْنَ إِلَىٰ قَوْمِ نُولِي بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ You are going to be called to go fight a people who are severe and strong. تُقَاتِلُونَهُمْ You're going to fight them to try to get the victory. أَوْ يُسْلِمُونَ Or you might not have to fight. They might submit. فَإِن تُطِيعُوا يُؤْتِكُمُ اللَّهُ أَجَرًا حَسَنًا And if you obey this time, and you go fight them, Allah will give you a great, I mean, a beautiful reward. But, but if you turn your back, like you just did before, like you turned your back before, you Allah will punish you all with a severely painful punishment. So that you're going to get another chance to fight. So if you do it again, then you're going to get a, a, a severe, because first time you're going to, going to look, overlook that. But you do it again, now the punishment is going to be there. Basically, you're on probation. Okay? This is what you got to do to prove yourself. Allah goes on to say, now this last ayah, Allah is telling us that there are legitimate excuses for not going to fight. This is not a statement for everybody. Everybody's not a mukhalifun. If you got a legitimate excuse not to do something that Allah commands you to do, okay. So Allah says, Laysa ala la haraj. There's no problem on the blind person. You ain't got no problem. Haraj. Haraj is, 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 is movement in your chest feeling bad. You know, I describe it as someone, you open the door, or somebody opens the door for you, spits in your face, and then slams the door and locks it. How do you feel? That's haraj. You can't get in that door. And let's say it's a little guy. It's a little guy or a little lady standing on a chair. You know? Yeah. And you know you can beat that guy up or that lady up. But they close the door and lock it. You're going to be feeling tight. That's haraj. Right? Tight. And there is no problem on the person who is haraj. Who has a problem. See, I got to walk with a cane. Okay? So I got an excuse. I can't walk too long. Leg get tired or something like that. But really the person. But the person who has a legitimate issue with his body. 
It's not just the blind person. It's not just the lame person. But whoever is like the blind person or the lame person. And just like the person who's sick, meaning it could be a temporary issue. Okay? It could be a temporary issue. And some of the Mufassirun go deeper and says that A'ma is the one who is ignorant. He's ignorant person. He can't see how to plan to do that. Okay? Because he's just a simple guy, simple lady. He can't see the plan. Let's say, for example, Hijra. He can't make a plan to make Hijra because he ain't got his, his mind ain't like that at all. He just, you know, simple Simon. Do his thing, come back. And the other person, he could see it, but he's physically unable. He ain't got the money. He ain't got the ability. Maybe he's on life parole. Okay? Or something like that. Got to pay his ex-wife all his money and then his blood when he dies. Okay? So he's a'araj. He's, he's crippled. Can't make that move. Or it could be a woman. She can't. She could see to make it, but she can't afford it because she's got... You know, so many children, she lives in a shoe, you know? So she's got this situation, so she's got to stay. Haraj. And those people who have temporary situations that they're trying to get better from. Okay? Working on getting the money, working on getting a, a, a degree or something like that so they can do something. And I'm just using an example of Hedrin as an example for what you can use. I got to get this money, I got to get this degree. so that I can have something viable to do when I get over there. What is wrong? However, or maybe not build business like that. You have to be careful because then sometimes you be too long. But Allah knows best everybody's situation. Okay? And Allah said that. He knows right? He knows all of our circumstances, what we're doing outside and what we're coming in. So Allah knows best. We don't have to judge the next person. It's only on us to give the message in a clear form so that it's understandable. Not to judge. And I don't want anybody to think I'm judging. I, of course, we judge on what is apparent. We say, oh, we draw an opinion on what is apparent. However, we're not the final judge. Allah knows best. Our, what we see could be wrong because our vision is limited to what we can see and understand based from our perspective. Okay. However, we bowel movements stink any worse than our own bowel movements. So we're not worried about somebody else. Our own sins are what we're focused on. Our own circumstances is what we're, we're, we're worried about. And I use that example because a lot of people think that they don't stink, but everybody else does. Okay. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ومن يطع الله ورسوله يدخله جنات and whomsoever and Allah ends this section by saying and whomsoever obeys Allah and his messenger Allah will enter him into those gardens تجري من تحتها الأنهار flowing under those those four types of rivers the rivers that have that nice water, right? That doesn't get rancid. The rivers that have that milk that doesn't change its taste. The rivers that have that khamar, that wine in there that tastes good, not like this stinking wine in this dunya. And Allah knows best. And the rivers that have that asal and musaffa, that pure honey. MashaAllah. Flowing. وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ يُعَذِّبْهُ عَذَابًا عَلِيمًا But know also whoever, no matter who he is, if he turns his back and leaves what Allah has told him to do, and he doesn't obey Allah, and he doesn't obey his messenger, then Allah will punish him with a painful punishment. Allahu anzala, Allahu nazala ahsan al-hadith. Allah has sent down the most beautiful conversation. Meaning that the, the Allah has sent down a when he says hadith here, it's like you're sitting in your room kicking it with your people. And you're having a good time. You say, well, where did the time go? Because you're having such a good conversation. When you're reading the Quran and learning the Quran, 
Allah nazzala ahsan al hadith, the most beautiful and the most the most excellent hadith. Kitab al mutashabihan mathani. It is a book that supports itself over and over. Each part is supporting the part that came before it and after it. Mathani, it's repetitive. Taqsha'irru min hujulud al-ladina yakshawna rabbih. Those people who uh, fear Allah, whenever they hear the Quran, they get goosebumps. Thumma talinu juluduhum wa qulubuhum ila dhikrillah. And then when their, their, their skin relaxes, their hearts are still thrown to the joy of the remembrance of Allah. Thalika hudullah. This Quran is the guidance of Allah. Yahdi bihi man yasha. He guides with this Quran whomsoever he wants. And whomsoever Allah has left to stray, then there is no one in the world that can guide him. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayk. Alhamdulillah. And I went over a few minutes. I usually want to stop by 15 minutes after the hour, but I went over for a minute. May Allah forgive me. May you guys forgive me for that. Other day, yesterday I think it was, somebody asked me about uh, Ibn Arabi, right? And I said, yes, it's that same Ibn Arabi. I was being facetious in actuality. I shouldn't have said it that way. Because both Ibn Arabi is a well-known. Somebody said, is that the well-known Ibn Arabi? He's the well-known Ibn Arabi. Both in, in the movie al Urtughru, there is a man called Ibn Arabi, Okay. Ibn Arabi, there's two Ibn Arabis. Both of them are Moors. Okay? Both of them are Moors. Meaning they're from Andalusia. Okay? Meaning they're Spanish mixed with African, Asian, some of them, and Arab, some of them. So the, the, the people in Spain called them Moor, mixed up, mixed Moor, because they had darker complexions than the white complexion people in South Europe. But they mixed with the people. So those people whose father was an Arab, and usually these were Umawis, they came from the Umawi dynasty, and we should know this, this again, this is our history, okay? They called themselves Ibn Arabi. Like, hey, my father was father was Arab, and you know, Ibn Arabi. So two of them became famous scholars, Sheikh Ibn Arabi. One was a Sufi, right? Ibn Arabi, mashallah, khayri. You know what I'm saying? Alhamdulillah, So one was a Sufi. He was a scholar. And the other one was, they're both Maliki. That was the other thing. They're both Maliki Medheb, as was everybody in, for the most part, in uh, West Africa. And that was considered part of West Africa, even though it was the Europe side. They went back and forth. Remember, between Spain and, and, and Maghreb or Morocco is 10 miles. The, the strait is 10 miles. A Sufi is a person who has added, to, to some degree, to varying degrees, acts of worship, okay, that are not in the Sharia of Islam, and some go so far as to, you know, making shirk and, you know, to to uh, their sheikhs or to graves and stuff like that. So. You have to watch out for the concepts of some of these Sufis. But the word Sufi, some of it today, we use Sufi for what some of the people in the past of the people in the past called Zuhud. You can pronounce it Zuhud. Okay, but it's actually Zuhud, like that. The H is sign, but you can pronounce it Zuhud. And this is something that we have to be careful about 
because zuhud is from the sur is from the sunnah and a major part of it and a major part of it okay in fact you cannot be a whole muslim without the issues of zuhud meaning not just your aqidah and belief but because the zuhud is the issues of the heart okay does that make sense so everything that you see a sufi do is not in, is not incorrect so because we have this concept that because because sufis are known to do some outlandish things that means everything sufis do is wrong it should be avoided this is not what we call insaf this is not balanced what we need to do is look and be scientists what does that mean weigh it look at whatever they do and if we find it and when we find it in the sunnah then we do it we apply it. when we do not we leave it period point blank stance with this concept of to so wolf in general because nowadays just to be honest with you nowadays there are a number of things well it's mixed basically it's mixed some of the things you see the sufis do are directly from the sunnah okay and especially when it comes to their attitude towards other people you know and you know when we are supposed to be people following the sunnah which our attitude is supposed to be you know opening and inviting as opposed to exclusive and fighting okay so that's an aspect that we're supposed to take you know uh, with okay. I'll tell you a story but anyway you have these two scholars one is Ibn Arabi the Sufi and that's the one in Otogro Ibn Arabi the Sufi from uh, from Andalus from Spain is the Sufi and one of the things they did they made him look like he was a white guy in the movie but in actuality he was a brown guy okay so you know that's another thing but Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, they, they had him in the movie, okay? But now I'll tell you the story that we, we, we learned this story in Mauritania. It's a Mauritanian story. So Alhamdulillah, maybe I should go get my Ibaya and put it on, Alhamdulillah. <laughs> and, and then when we get past, past the 15th day, I'll, 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 I'll wear my Ibaya so we could be in Mauritania, inshallah. Remind me, huh? okay? This is my uh, fashion consultant. Who the one is? The first, the one, the other one is is, is Ibn Arabi, the Sheikh Scala, uh, the Salafi Sheikh uh, Ibn Arabi Al Maliki, who we study from all the time. The other one is the the, the Sufi uh, Ibn Arabi, who was very instrumental in Maliki. Is someone who inclines. Uh, uh, Maliki is two things. Maliki represents fo the, the followers of Imam Malik. Imam Malik. And Imam Malik is one of the Salaf. Okay? Does that make sense? All right. So, it's not wrong for them to follow Imam Malik since they're following the Salaf. As we always say, oh, you're not following the Salaf. Yes, they are. Imam Malik is one of the Salaf. Unless they didn't realize that. Okay? Now, we do not blindly follow. Blind following is for uh, beginners. And, yeah, beginners. Beginning, you blind follow. The more you learn, the more you learn, the more you become responsible for yourself. Okay? And then you only follow, then you only follow 
when you do not know. Or like, like, for example, like when there is ikhtilaf, there is difference of opinions and you don't know which one is better. You cannot figure out which one you think is better. Better? Because you don't have the knowledge, right? So then you then you follow the the, 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 the shift that you trust, let's say Imam Malik in that case. Or and you don't have to follow him at all. You could say you could follow a, a, a modern person. You might say, let's say you call me. See, I will tell by right, you know, what do I do when I come up from the Rukul? Do I put my hands on my chest? Do I say Sami Allah Do I put my hands on my side? Do I say Sami Allah Do I put my hands on my chest? Which one do I do? You know, and then you come and you ask, so then you get that opinion. Okay? So that's what Imaliki is. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. But I was going to tell you the story, this Mauritanian story, and this is like showing the difference between the different characteristics. And the Mauritanians, they tell this story to say, uh, basically, what they do, I'm going to say how they say, this is the difference. They say, what is the difference between someone who studies in Saudi, and I'm not attacking Saudi, I'm just telling a story, okay? And someone who studies in Mauritania, okay? This is how they tell us the story, what you're going to get. The knowledge, to say the knowledge is, let's say it's the same. So he says, you know, and the shir is in halakha, and other shiyuk come to that halakha. Other shiyuk come to the halakha, and they sit down. So, yeah, when you just because you have a circle doesn't mean you don't have scholars in that circle. Okay, other scholars are in that, that circle sitting down, benefiting from that particular class. And so someone says, hey, what's the difference between Mauritania and, and Saudi Arabia? Okay, what's the difference in these schools? And he says, well, we're going to show you the difference in it. Okay, the next shit that comes up from Mauritania, nobody give him salams. Okay, when he comes and he says, salam alaikum. Don't nobody pick up your head. Don't nobody say anything. So then, the next guy comes up. That's Mauritanian. Sheikh, he comes. He says, Salam Allah alaykum. Salam alaykum, ya ikhwan. Nobody says anything. Halakas, solitude, quiet, looking down. He looks at them. He looks at all of them. Salam alaykum, ikhwan. He says it twice. Salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He beautifies it. Right? Nobody says anything. Then he says, Ya Ikhwan, if I've done something to offend anybody here, I'm sorry, Samihuni, forgive me. Very sorry. You know? And he sits down at the edge of the the, the halqa, doesn't say anything. Okay? Sheikh doesn't say anything. They sit quiet. The next Sheikh that comes is graduate from Saudi. He comes, Salam Allah alaikum, Salam alaikum ya khwan. Nobody says anything. He says, Rahmatullah. Nobody says anything. He says, Salam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Don't you guys hear me? What's wrong with you? Don't you know who I am? Huh? I don't need to put up with this. And he turns around and he leaves. That's the story. And this is what the Mauritanians tell us when we go there to study, they tell us this type of story because they're trying to incline what attitude they want us to have when we leave. Okay? I'm not saying it's true. Not saying that that's the case for people that come from, that go graduate from Medina. No way. We have some slam dance people that come out of Medina. The point of the story is not to slam Medina or any school in, in Saudi Arabia or anything like that. The point of the school the, of the, the, the story is to benefit from the attitude the teacher wants you to have. Right? That what I just told you is zuhud. Does that make sense? Or one aspect of zuhud. Does that make sense, guys? I don't want you to think that. I got a problem with the, the, the students in Medina or the ones that graduate from Umar Qura or anything like that. 
Uh, if I got it, something I first one I go to to listen to is uh, Abu Usama or Loko Abu Muslima or you know or any of the other different shiuk that graduated from there. They have a whole bunch of them. You know, my first Sheikh Shamuddin in Quran was the first graduate African descendant from the 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 what do you call it the Caribbean, but he was living in the United States at the time that went there and graduated. Shamuddin, if people know about Sheikh Shamuddin, he was just getting out of, uh, he was the imam over in in California, okay, uh, on St. Andrews over there, Barakallah Fihim, in the hood, then he came to, I think he went to Charlotte after that, but he was my Sheikh and started me in Tahfid al-Qur'an and of all the Qira'at back in, uh, like say, 98. Alhamdulillah. So, Alhamdulillah, I study with many three shaykhs, but that's not the purpose of this class here. You know, inshallah, I'm doing my biography so it could be on the line so people can see what it is. Alhamdulillah, uh, Rabbil The point is, uh, what I was just mentioning, Sham Odin, he was a hafiz of Quran who, uh, what do you call it, knew all ten kira'at. He was inspiring us to do that. He was humble like that, but he graduated from Medina as well. So I'm just making a point that I don't have a problem with the sex from Medina or anything like that. I don't want nobody be sending me no hate mail, anything like that. Okay. So we understand about the two Ibn Arabis. Otherwise, there was another mistake that I made. Uh, which surah was that, uh, Abu Mahmoud, that we had with his Ja'ala? If he, if he could find it, I'll, I'll remember. But I used the word ja'ala here, and I, I said ja'ala to make what was implied there was that, you know, because I didn't use the word that they used in the tafsir because the word they used in the tafsir is incorrect, okay? Or incorrect from the normal meaning of that word because the normal understanding of the word was awjada, and it's not to be used in that context because it's talking about the Quran, if I remember correctly. So you ja'ala, and it's the teacher of Allah. So it's not simple. Surah Tuzukhru. All right, let me go to Surah Tuzukhru. I think it's the third ayah. My memory serves me correctly. إنا جعلناه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنا جعلناه قرآنا عربيا it says إنا it's the second it's the third ayah like I thought إنا the fact of the matter is I have جعلناه and I said I have made it قرآنا عربيا okay a Quran a recital that is in the Arabic language, meaning it is clear and leaves no doubt about what is being said. So that perhaps you can gain an intellect by it. And in the translation, it says, Meaning, we made this, this book. Wajada is to find it there. Wajada min al-adam is also from the meaning, meaning it came, brought it from nothing. But this would imply that the Quran is created. And this is the, the, the thing here that we want to make it clear that no one make it incorrect it was the word ja'ala is to make or to put inside okay but what is implied here some of this you can't really say with the english words because all of them do not meet the meanings of ja'ala okay so ja'ala here is that allah in his in his way made the quran to be in the arabic language okay now that doesn't mean mean that he created allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that the quran is a speech of allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala. But if he wanted it to be in another language, he could have made it. So he made it in another language. But Allah wanted it to be in the Arabic, so it was in the Arabic language. And it's not to be implied here that we're saying he made the Quran like he created something else because we know the Quran is not created. The book is. No, but the Quran itself is not created. And the book is not called the Quran an actuality. People really... We are so far from understanding what reality is. 
it's not appropriate in most cases to call the book, the actual physical book, the Qur'an. Does anybody know what it's supposed to be called? Hmm. Mus'haf, or Mishaf, or Mas'haf, okay? But Mus'haf and Mas'haf are the main two ones, okay? No, it's not really called Furqan on, in, 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 the, in the public. It's referred to as Furqan and stuff like that, but the book itself is called Mus'haf, okay? As all the scriptures, and Mus'haf, it, it corresponds with scriptures, okay? And this is the word that we see all the time, where Allah says, Suhuf, Suhufi Ibrahim wa Musa, Suhufu Ibrahim wa Musa, right? Suhuf, Mus'haf, same word. The scriptures, the pages that have the, 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 the Mus'haf means one pages on it that have the Quran on it, or pages that have the revelation of Allah on it. And scriptures are different from other pages because look, this pages of my book. This pages, Awrak. Whereas this is scripture because it has Quran on those pages. So this is just not called Awrak. This is called Suhf or a Mus'haf when it's put together. So that's what we're supposed to be calling in the book. Or you can call it Al Kitab. You know, the book. You know, but to call it a Quran, that's in reciting. That's the Quran in actuality. The Quran is what we recite. Okay? The book itself is a mushaf. And I know we've been saying this for years, and the majority of the people haven't brought on to it, but you know, we have to keep it that way and keep reminding the people, and inshallah ta'ala, maybe that, that understanding will spread. Okay, those two things I wanted to uh, get clarified. Because, you know, we're not always correct. We make mistakes. Alhamdulillah. And I see this thing shaking in my, in my face. You know, I wanted to tell you about this too. You know, these, uh, what is this called? Tassel, right? What's it called? Tassel. Alhamdulillah. Yes, Umar bin Umar. Sometimes you see these tassels on a sheikh. And why are they here? What, what is the purpose for them? Why do ulama uh, put the tassel there? And sometimes they put it like in front. Where you can see it, you know, like this as Hari Shield, they put it where you can see it. No, not looking like a five percenter from my east. They're trying to look like us. Okay? They bite me. They don't even know what they're doing. What I'm trying to do is 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 is, is put you on to the, the real meanings behind the things that we do so that our traditions the early man in the past used to put tassels on their kufis and those things like that and put it where they could see it 